Greetings fellow game developers. If you are programmers like me, then you are also a fan of freedom. A freedom to create your own bicycles with unique packs and features. So if you find yourself in need for a game server, it's time to create your own from scratch. So let's think. We need our server to be fast and cheap, so forget about Windows, but we also need it to be cool, trending and easy to learn. Otherwise, we can spend months and months on just server logic itself. And here comes the mighty Node.js. It's easy to use, configure, and it shows surprisingly good performance for the JavaScript based app. Also, Node.js supports web sockets pretty much out of the box. So, let's start. I will try to keep this tutorial quick and tight, also informative, maybe even enlightening. And to make things simple, our tutorial application would be the chat message client. The first thing we need to do is to choose our hosting environment. I prefer Wultercom, it's simple and cheap, but you're free to choose whatever hosting that you like. So let's deploy a new server, the default settings seems fine except for the server type. For our example, let's choose CentOS 7. Trust me guys, it just works. Let's select the cheapest server configuration and name our server the MMO server, cause let's face it, every game they have dreams to build his own successful MMO game, and we are not an exception. So start deploying, check configuration, everything looks fine. So let's connect to this brand new server from local machine. I use the app called Bitwise SSH, and there is no reason you should choose a different one. Anyway, the links for all the stuff in this video will be in the description below, so let's move on. Next, you need to copy IP address, username and password generated for our server and paste it in the SSH application. Port number should be 22, because it's a default value for an SSH connection. Click on login button and press accept and save. If everything is fine, you would see a console and FTP pop-up showing. And we successfully connected to our MMO server. Great! We are not going to dive deep in server security, but the most crucial thing that we can do is to change the default SSH port number. So we open SSH config file, locate line with the text port 22 and change it to 1111. Quit and save. And let's open this new port to public through firewall configuration. Reload firewall, restart SSHD, service and our server instance. Now, let's connect to our server using new port value. Was easy so far. Let's not stop now and move on to the next important thing we should install. And that would be Node.js. So let's pull the latest stable version of Node.js from online repository. Look at setup script. Clean server local cache to make it work fast. And install GCC compiler. With all that, we can finally install Node.js environment. All that left is to check installed version and we're good to go. Good job so far. Our server configuration is finally over and we can move on to the really cool stuff. But not so fast. A remote environment is ready for deployment to the big world, but there is nothing to deploy right now. First, we need to write some server code. And to write it, we will install Node.js and Visual Studio on our local machine. So just download it one after another and install. It's really simple and straightforward. Now this is where the things get exciting. Let's open Visual Studio Code and create new project for a server application. We also need to open terminal view, because we will be using it a lot. Type npm init, press enter and fill out node server configurations. Once that's done, the npm will create package JSON configuration file for you. And we can start installing our project dependency, the main is socket.io and the TypeScript. Create configuration file for TypeScript. In our first two folders. 
src, short for source files, which will contain our TypeScript code, and dist, short for distributables, so our compiled JavaScript code. Now let's create our first file, an entry point for the application to start. Call it index.ts, short for TypeScript file extension. Create another one and call it server.ts. It will contain server startup logic. Open server.ts file and let's import create server method and server object from built-in HTTP module. Next, import all from socket.io library. Create new class. Call it socket server. Create static read-only field for server port value. Create another private field which will hold HTTP connection object and the socket.io events handler. Now we need to assign all this field in the constructor, otherwise the compiler throws an error. Also, let's create new method for listing HTTP connection. In index.ts we just instantiate our socket server. So let's run it and check if everything works fine. But in order to do this, we need to add starting script first. After that, just type npm run local server in the terminal, and it seems like our server is good. We want to be able to receive client events on the server. For this task, let's create a new script called socket controller ts and write pretty basic logic for handling socket events. You can write it by your own or just copy from my GitHub repository. All links will be in the description below. And that's that. The basic server logic is done. We can move on to Unity. The finish is within our reach, so let's not slow down. Create new Unity application, call it NMO client. Next, let's import free socket.io package. Drag socket prefab to our scene and change URL port to our socket server port. Create first script, call it network controller. Drag it to the socket object and rename it. Let's create a simple UI for our game client. In order for chat message to be shown on screen, we create scroll rect UI component and the chat message prefab. Next, let's create message panel component, which will be the view model for the chat canvas. Open network controller class and add some simple socket handled logic. Don't forget to add message panel component logic too. After coding is done, let's fix our UI canvas a bit. Add some missing stuff like input field and submit button. Now let's test the local server connection. Open server project and run it. By the way, I tweak some server code in, in the socket controller on say high even handler. If you miss this out, you can still find all the stuff on the GitHub. Let's not distract ourselves. We're ready to launch Unity client. As you can see, our local server successfully received connection event and the message event. But what about multiple connection? Will our server properly send messages to all the client? Let's find out. Is there something wrong? Ah, I forgot to run Unity Editor. Now it's good. The server works just as we expected. But there is still one thing left. We need to publish our server application code to the remote server, which we created in the start of the video. So let's open SSH connection and install a couple of things before we will be ready to publish. And also, let's add two new script run commands. First will be build, 
for the TypeScript files and the second is production server starting command. Now let's open server FTP browser and create new folder. Drag and drop every file of your local server project to the remote server FTP folder except for the not modules folder. We forgot to create log folders so let's do just that. Now open the remote server SSH terminal window and run first npm install and then npm build commands. As you can see, npm build command would build all our TypeScript files into JavaScript files. The last command will be npm run production server. And finally, we need to open server port to public through firewall. Lastly, but not leastly, change the server IP inside Unity Network object to the remote server IP. And that's it! I showed you the hard part of the server configuration and building codebase. Now you can use all your creativity to build the greatest online game ever! And also like and subscribe for more content like this. Bye!